is just aggressive enough to be able to take advantage. All right, it is looking to me like our players are ready down there. See them uh, looking at their hands. All right, let's head down. It's time for the finals here from Barcelona. Hello and welcome to coverage of Grand Prix Barcelona. It's time for the finals. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe in the booth with Randy Bueller, and we've got Fabrizio and Terry versus Mady Sadi. And we are underway here. We've got an aggressive red white deck from Fabrizio versus a much slower three color deck from Mady Sadi. We would call that Obzon <laughs> a little while ago. Those are the delirium colors. Indeed. And Mady does have some really nice Delirium cards going, though. It looks like right off the bat, this is not where he wants to be. <laughs> He's going to play a Cathar's Companion. Does not have green mana as of yet. That's a Gibbering Fiend there for Fabrizio and Terry. That was the card. That, that can be a pretty important card against some matchups. I think that Mady is actually going to be kind of relieved to see this type of card from him. As Mady is playing cards like Tooth Collector in his deck. And bang! Smash. Gyre each bandit is going to crush in there. Wow, and Mady just took it all. Doesn't want to trade? Apparently not. Me a bit. I'm really surprised by that. I will probably find out shortly why. Well, there's part of the reason. He's got an answer for the bandit already, and he wants to attack. I mean, he hasn't been watching this top eight, right? No. He's been playing. He's been battling it. the whole time. He was the last match on this one, too. Right, yeah, he's been he's gone to time both or I think been the last match to finish both times, so he's also missing land drops and colors now. And we'll see if Fabrizio can capitalize on this. This is a big turn for Fabrizio. He needs to add to his board and keep that pressure up, and he does. Halpak Wolf comes down. Nice big three three. Yeah, I wonder if Mitty knows quite how ridiculously aggressive Fabrizio is. I think if he knew he'd be trading. Based on the play pattern, I would say he probably doesn't know. It also, though, I haven't got a great look at Mady's hand, and this may be him saying, look, I'm not going to win this game any other way than starting to attack, so I'm just going to do it. He plays a Dauntless Cathar post-combat, and this is Jeez. a huge crushing blow here the for duelist. Fabrizio. He gets in for 10 damage and drops Mady down to four thanks to the Voldaran Duelist, and you put your shields down for one second against Fabrizio, and he is going to hammer you with damage. He doesn't need much now. Ru a rush of adrenaline or two will probably get the job done from this position. We saw this in game one of the semifinal as well. Like I don't think Huey appreciated quite how fast Fabrizio was. And he kind of, you know, slow rolled a throttle and wound up getting blown out by a combat trick. Yeah. Where if he just used it, you know, main phase or first available opportunity, he might have... Uh, Which he did in the, in the second yeah, game, Yeah, he, he the figured way. it out pretty quick. Yeah. I mean, that's obviously, you don't play Magic that long without... Right. Okay, Fabrizio's attacking with everything, and everything's getting blocked. A silver for Partisan was the addition for Mady Sadi that turn. Not great here. It's just a 2-2 two, two for 3. That yeah, looks like some double strike. Yes, and you know what? There's more. How about a rush oh, of adrenaline geez. as well? That's game. Plus 2. Trample double strike. Dead. The combo. And that does it. What a super fast start. This is exactly... How I predicted, though, or how yeah, I yeah. had it imagined in yeah, my head, I mean, it. right? It's like, that's what's supposed to happen. Mady Saudi missed a color and missed a land drop. Yep. And even though he was able to keep playing spells, that was enough of a stumble for Fabrizio to capitalize fully. Also, you know, I have to say it did feel like Mady maybe has learned his lesson. He may have misjudged where he was at on the beatdown spectrum there. Mm -hmm. Very much the defensive player. I think that if he would have seen the games that we had seen, he probably would just keep his creatures back to block every turn and not bother attacking with the Hound and things like that. Yeah, I mean, Fabrizio overkilled him by a fair amount. Oh, yes. I, I mean, let's say Cathar's Companion does trade for, like, a Gibbering Fiend or something. Does he actually save enough damage to survive the combo finish? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe not. You know, I don't, I'm not sure either. I mean, it's so tough to say because if he would have had a blocker back for the turn when Fabrizio played the Vuldron Duelist, it changes a lot. Like yeah, he, would, he, he takes less damage and blocks one of the attackers there as well. Even our plan, we would have traded by then. Mm -hmm. 
I would trade it first opportunity. Right. Like, right, I want right, to keep right. all the creatures off the board for Fabrizio to minimize the impact of those combat tricks. The thing is, maybe he doesn't know this. Right. Like, we're, we, we got to watch Fabrizio draft and play two rounds. So, like, we're speaking from a position of knowing the inner workings we of all, Fabrizio's deck. And now maybe he knows. Like, yeah. he saw two combat tricks that last turn and the Voldaran Duelist, so he's going to adjust. But uh, it is interesting fair, to speculate. We actually get to watch Fabrizio draft this deck twice. Twice. And played we watched it, it this morning. He also so played it in sealed. He <laughs> was red, white, and sealed with either four or five combat tricks. So <laughs> we're, we're used to it. Maybe he's had uh, a little bit more on his plate this weekend, you know, <laughs> getting to the top eight of a GP and now making it to the finals. So. <laughs> One game away for Fabrizio and Terry from GP title number five. Absurd. That would put his GP top eight conversion rate at 50% for his career. That is just unheard of. Kai's might be 50%. <laughs> but whatever. No. You're in a conversation no, you're where it's right. like, <laughs> you're in a conversation with just Kai, it's fine. Kai's might be 50%, though. <laughs> it certainly was when he won when he won his fifth GP. Because he, he had seven wins in, I mean, his pro tour, his seven wins were in his first seven top eights. <laughs> Are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. <laughs> what? I didn't know that. <laughs> no, he was like seven for seven. I did not know that. <laughs> It was absurd. He should have just quit. <laughs> <laughs> Grand Prix was similar. Left for me here. It definitely didn't take him 14 top eights to win seven GPs. But, I mean, he's been playing so many years since then. He's I don't think he's won a GP in the last 10 years, but I, th I do think he has some top eights. Yeah, he hasn't played that many either. Uh, exactly. Yeah, I mean, he's certainly played more pro tours than GPs over the last yeah, you know, long chunk of time. Okay, Mady is on a mulligan here, and he's kept. All right, so at least we get to see him just go to six and not any further than that. He just put a card on the bottom, and he leads off with the planes before passing the turn back to Fabrizio. Land enters a battlefield tap for Fabrizio here. Okay, he's got two of his three colors to Saudi. No play on turn two, though. What's a turn two play for Antiri? Is it another gibbering fiend? No. Kessig Forge Master for Fabrizio and Terry. This would be a really good time for a Tooth Collector, and he has it! Wow. Big play for Saudi, a massive two for one, and a Tooth Collector that down the line can get really annoying for Antiri, and you see why. Here is a Gibbering Fiend now. Sure. Now, Medi's nowhere near. Warp Landscape will help? Warp Landscape will help, and he, he is playing green cards that can help him there. Stallion to Ashmouth, not looking amazing here, but it can start attacking, and it's a good blocker, so fair enough. Vessel of Nascency is also a card that Saadi plays. Doesn't have any green mana at the moment, though. And he's attacking. I like this. Fabrizio and Terry missing his third land drop is a green light for Mady to say, you know what, even though I was willing to make the adjustment to be <laughs> the fully defensive player, I'm not going to here. I'm going to make sure that I stay aggressive because one way that you can let Fabrizio back in this game pretty easily is by staying back when you're when Fabrizio's missing land drops and you certainly don't want to do that. Okay, and Ember Eye Wolf is a follow-up and Mady has to basically just use his whole turn to crack the warp landscape to go get that forest. But, as you can see, he now has all three colors of mana. Could even have five mana this turn. And he also has a land in the graveyard now for that Tooth Collector. Yeah, he's going to crunch in there for six damage, too. I like this for Mady. It is really tough for Fabrizio with the resources he has to get in for enough damage to really threaten Mady's life total. And... Uh, as it stands, he has no good blocks, and six damage is a huge chunk. And yeah, this is just another big turn for Saadi as he plays out two more creatures. Unfortunately, the sum total of power from those creatures, one. But he, they can block, and he's still ahead on board here. So looking pretty good for Saadi. He would love to get Delirium going now, though, to get himself another threat. There's a guy reach Bandit, but it can't even attack here profitably, so he just has to pass the turn back. 
Saudi making a really nice bid to even things up and force a game three here. This time it was Anteri who stumbled. Stallion's going to attack, offer a trade for the Gaia Reach Bandit, and Fabrizio is going to take him up on it. So that's two of the four necessary card types here for Delirium for maybe Saudi. Uh-oh, here we go. There's a sorcery. Unfortunately, <laughs> he is going to get another land in there, but that's one of the ones that he already had. So Fork in the Road, helping him out. Normally, it gets you to Delirium quite quickly because land is one of the more difficult ones to get in, but he actually already had that. So now he's got Creature, Sorcery, Land, and he's one away from Delirium. Once that, once he gets Delirium going, the Tooth Collector is going to start killing things, and it gets really ugly. But you can see that maybe, you know, his deck isn't great. I mean, look at the creatures he's got. He's... <laughs> He's got a Moldgraf Scavenger that's not active. He's got a Cathar's Companion that's kind of shrug-worthy anyway. He's got a Skeleton that's not doing anything. And he just traded off his Stallion of Ashmouth, which is also a, a mediocre card. All right. Halpak Wolf is the play for Antari. And yes, it can block, thanks to the Enveri Wolf right now. Maybe he had a removal spell to get rid of that. It would be like killing two creatures at once. Instead, he's actually going to attack with his Tooth Collector here, wow. as well as the Companion. He must have a trick, right? Just going to trade it off. Think. Wow, he just traded it off. Oh, Fabrizio is going to be pretty happy with that. Oh, cancel that order for <laughs> Macabwald. There so then it all makes okay. sense now. What does he discard? Does he discard a way to get to Delirium? No, another land. And wow, now he's got a Kindly Stranger, but again, he's still one off of Delirium. He's still got Sorcery Land Creature. But Fabrizio's life total has fallen down to eight. He's got a full grip of cards, but he just simply cannot deploy them quickly enough after stumbling on mana. And it's a pair of wolves. Halpak wolves as well as another wolf with the Ember Eye. So back to you, Mady Sadi, and... Uh, well, this could be Fabrizio starting to stabilize this board, maybe even turn things around. Still feels like Saudi's ahead significantly, and wow, he's just attacking again. Can do a pair of three threes. One's a trade, but one's a... chump attack, as it were. I guess Tooth Collector is going to finish off a 3-3. Is that the plan? Still, why risk your Kindly Stranger? Yeah, right? the problem is just that he loses his Kindly Stranger in the transaction. Take three. So Fabrizio does fall down to five. Maybe he's got another way to dig back. Another creature. There's a Tooth Collector. Fabrizio and Terry, of course, knew that that was coming. That, that was a, a play that maybe had shown with the Macabre Waltz. And here's land number four, and it's a near Heath chaplain. Okay. Wow. Maybe he wants to get that tooth collector yes. active so badly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Delirium finishes this game off. He goes long enough without Delirium, though. <laughs> All right. He has the ability to get Delirium if he has one of the other types in his hand. I think he doesn't. Crazy. He just doesn't have it. Call the Bloodline would have been one of those itself, <laughs> but he can't discard it to itself. So <laughs> I think he's just going to make a vampire with that last land he has in his hand and try to do this the good old-fashioned way. But if he draws another enchantment or an instant artifact, he can he can get that Tooth Collector going and make it work. Land number five for Fabrizio and Terry gets him an incorrigible youth. And there we go with the Call the Bloodline plan again. Yeah, if he can get Delirium going, that also gives him the Scavenger. Mm -hmm. What did he find? Best case scenario, probably an instant, like a throttle. Sure. He could even do it during combat with his companion. Looks like he's going to continue to offer trades here. 
Fabrizio will take him up on it. I think Fabrizio knows that the Near Heath Chaplain's time on this planet <laughs> is perhaps short, and so he's just going to get value out of it while he can. And there's a Stallion. So even though Mady has had a hard time getting Valerium going, he, hit, he still has gotten ahead early and managed to stay ahead. And still looking to be in a pretty good position here, even though Fabrizio has found his way out of his mana woes from earlier. Fabrizio's deck doesn't play nearly as good from behind as it does when he's attacking and able to use those combat tricks aggressively. But he can hang in there. Hmm. Flame Blade Angel now for Fabrizio and Terry. Things are getting interesting. Fabrizio's all the way down to five. Maybe he doesn't need much here to punch through, but he can't quite do it as the board sits. He's got five attackers with power. Should let him get in for a single point of damage. Not seem worth it. Looks like he's going to pitch a Dauntless Cathar to make a lifelink vampire, and then he's going to go ahead and uh, get his 1 1 spirit out of the Dauntless Cathar, so he gets two creatures out of there and then just passes the turn back once again. One thing he can do here if he wanted is also attack with his skeleton, because if it were to die, he can buy it back sure. and start looping it through with a call the bloodline. And if it doesn't die, then it's poking in for a damage and that's pretty good. Fabrizio's seen enough though, he's gonna start attacking with his flame blade angel. Sure. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> what is he doing? What just happened? Plus two, plus two, that's eight. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine with double strike, that's lethal. Did that really just happen? Did he just did that just go unblocked and Fabrizio just won the GP with that? Oh my god! Fabrizio and Terry just won the Grand Prix. Fabrizio and Terry is our champion. <laughs> he just swung for 18 flying double strike damage in a game that he was so far behind on three combat tricks. And Fabrizio oh is a five time GP champion and platinum pro again. <laughs> Newly Insta minted. platinum. Congratulations, Fabrizio and Terry. He does wow. it with style and he does it with flair. 18 damage in one hit after being behind the whole entire game. What a great finals here from Barcelona. I, I looked up some of the stats we were talking about, by the way. Kai Bude, 7 for 15, below 50%. Alexander Haynes, actually 50%. Four wins and eight. But Fabrizio and Terry, five wins, 10 Grand Prix top eights, just all time historically unprecedented accomplishment. All right, that will do it for the finals here from Barcelona. Whether riding the bus or waiting for the Grand Prix Finals to begin, Magic Duels is a great way to hone your skills and try new strategies. Featuring hundreds of earnable cards from Magic's latest sets and virtually unlimited AI and online opponents, start playing Magic Duels free today on iPhone, iPad, Xbox One, and Steam. There's never been a better time to get into Standard. Set Rotation and Shadows of Innistrad have altered the format's landscape dramatically. Blaze a new trail at Friday Night Magic. For more information, visit magic.wizards.com slash FNM. Welcome back to the booth here in Barcelona. What an exciting and crazy finish to the GP. You know the funny part? I was just thinking about this, Randy. So 
uh, if you looked, he had a 1-1 one, one flyer, right? You think, oh, yeah. he could have blocked. He could have jumped. It wouldn't have mattered. The trample. It was 18. He was at 17, and it <laughs> gave it tra It actually had double trample. Double trample? <laughs> and double strike, yeah. So incredible stuff. And as you were saying, you know, this does put Fabrizio into really rare company when oh, it yeah. comes to, you know, percentages on conversion rate on can, a GP. Can you name the people with five Grand Prix wins? I mean, no. five for 10. Basically unprecedented. I found a four for eight. Which okay, was and Alexander that was Alexander Haynes. Haynes. And I mean, at one point, Kai was seven for less than 14. He's mm -hmm. at seven for 15 right now. Um, but oh, yeah. he is? Kai is so seven. So if he goes and plays one GP and wins it, he could be at 50-50 and just be like, I'm out. Eight for 16, I'm done. Yeah, Kai is seven for 15 right now. <laughs> okay. I don't I don't know what this, when the seventh one was. It was, he's got, it definitely was above 50%, but All right. wow, just well, unprecedented. I can't wait for this. We're going to have a word with Fabrizio Ontario. I know Brian David Marshall is standing by with him right now. All right, I'm here with Grand Prix Barcelona champion Fabrizio and Terry. All right, Fabrizio, what do you do with these at this point? This is your fifth Grand Prix trophy in your career. Door stops, paperweights. What do you What do you do with them? Uh, I can still find space for them. I can promise you, I can still find space for them. This is just great, just uh, fantastic. We, we've been talking to you a lot this weekend. We, we were following you along. You, you gave us a little bit of an overview of Limited, and then uh, you, you decided you liked the spotlight. You stopped losing. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just been great, uh, and so if you want, he joins it's, it's been better than the fact that we so you've been five, following the all the week long, long so <laughs> everyone Levy, can actually see all, well all the rounds and, and all that I got through really? to get yeah. to the That's trophy. It's, it's just been a fantastic weekend. It's only been at it for this like is the years. second time you've done this, where going into the Pro Tour weekend, you've won the limited Grand Prix proceed immediately preceding it. You won Grand Prix Mexico City going into Atlanta. Now you've won Grand Prix Barcelona. What kind of confidence level do you have going into the draft at the Pro Tour? I'll start by bragging, and I'll say it's the third time. My first UB win was Warsaw, and it was also the limited UB the week before Pro Tour Atlanta. Uh, so yeah, it's the third time, and again, like the confidence that you get by winning is just unexplainable. It's again by numbers, it's again by stats, and there's no way I can explain like how much confidence helps, and it, it just, it's just unreal. Like you keep winning, and then you win some more, and then you just win some more, and you win some more, and just you just challenge all the numbers and all the stats. It's just unexplainable. Well, let's talk about a couple of the numbers here. This locks you for platinum going into the Pro Tour next weekend. That's thousands of dollars for you on top of a substantial prize purse this weekend. Yeah, exactly. Uh, winning was the only result that will lock me straight away to planning on, uh, which I just did. And it means that I'll get uh, an appearance fee next week in the Pro Tour. I'll also get a room. I already had a room. <laughs> but I won't mind paying that, that money and just having two rooms. That's fine. So some of my teammates will enjoy a room by himself. That, that's just fine. I'll sacrifice myself. You can you. You can use one of the rooms for all your trophies. Yeah, that, that, that's the way. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Uh, another thing that you accomplished with this win is, I believe, this puts you in the lead for Grand Prix Master. Issue. Last time I checked, I may be wrong, I think it was two points behind Saito and one point behind Reed. I hear Saito only got one point uh, this weekend, so I should be a few points clear of both of them now. With Brian Brown doing back there, kind of lurking and also yeah. picking up a couple more points this weekend. Yeah, yeah, he was, I think, fee for four, and now, now he's definitely getting closer as well. All right, I'm going to let you go celebrate with your team, uh, Eureka teammates. I will see you on Tuesday. I'm going to come by the house and check in on you guys. Good luck next weekend at the Pro Tour for Brizio and Terry. Great, thank you. Hey there, welcome back to the booth here at GP Barcelona. That's Randy Bueller, Marshall Sutcliffe, and what an awesome weekend. You got to hear from Fabrizio and, and Terry, our champion, and a little from us, sorry about that, in the middle. Uh, but yes, we have now crowned our champion. Five out of ten for Fabrizio. He gets insta-platinum, meaning that he is platinum walking into the door in Madrid on this coming weekend. And I wanted to tell you about that as well because we expect you to be there, right? This was our first taste of Shadows Ever Innistrad. We got to play a lot of sealed and a lot of booster draft to get an idea. And I know that the, a lot of the pros that played here and over the course of the three GPs over the weekend, they were using it as a testing ground as much as oh yeah. anything else, right? Oh and they're yeah. going to go into the Pro Tour with a little bit of extra knowledge. This Friday from Madrid, we get to see the second stage of this act here because you know what's going to happen? Draft and then Standard. For those oh, yeah. of you who are looking forward to seeing what Shadows Over Innistrad has done to Standard with the rotation with the brand new cards in here, 
we get to find out once it gets in the hands of the full-time professional players this coming weekend. And we certainly hope you'll join us. Remember, that coverage starts on a Friday. Pro Tours are three days, so it's going to be Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's then going to take us to the next weekend in Toronto, where mm -hmm. we're going to kind of put a cap on this whole thing on the, on the three-act play here and see uh, how the format ends up reacting post Pro Tour. So hopefully you'll be able to join us for as much of that as humanly possible. We certainly want to thank you for taking the time to hang out with us this week here from Barcelona. We had a great time bringing you coverage of what ended up being a really exciting event, especially down the stretch. Super awesome games, super awesome cards, and, and a lot of fun for all of us here on the coverage team. So that will do it for our, uh, for our telecast here from Barcelona, though. Again, this Friday, same channel right here on Twitch. You can find the Pro Tour, Pro Tour Shadows and Ramstrad. We hope to see you there. We'll see you next time.